Rule number three in a debate, use a confident voice. You don't want to use a whiny voice. So, for example, if I was arguing, again, on behalf of chocolate milk, I would say, you should absolutely have chocolate milk in your school. Chocolate milk has the same amount of nutrients as plain milk. More kids drink it. It is a fact that more kids drink it. More kids order it with their lunch than plain milk. Just look at the numbers. It's also more delicious than plain milk. And milk has natural sugars in it anyway. So is it really that bad for you? Regular milk has sugar. Chocolate milk might have a little extra sugar, but it's delicious and it gets kids drinking milk, which is what you wanted, right? See, I'm using a confident voice. If I were to use a whiny, non-convincing voice, I would say, look, I, um, I, I like chocolate milk. Maybe you could have some chocolate milk. Um, chocolate milk is delicious. Um, it, it, it's better than um, plain milk because uh, I, don't, I don't know. It just is. Would you, buy, would you get chocolate milk with your lunch? If that guy showed up to argue on behalf of chocolate milk, if the fate of chocolate milk depended on a whiny, kind of mousy voice in a debate, no, no, no. No, you wouldn't. So it is very important to have your shoulders back, voice projecting, sound confident, sound calm, sound collected when you are arguing or making your argument. Now, if you're writing your argument, you could still sound confident. You could use words such as, I truly believe or I strongly feel that chocolate milk is the best option that you could have as a drink in the cafeteria. You have to write that you truly believe it. Your choice of words can still project confidence, even though the reader can hear your voice. Now, how you sound whiny and weaker in your writing could sound like this. If you simply wrote on a piece of paper, I think chocolate milk is kind of the best, I guess. That, that to me, as a reader makes me think that you don't really believe it and that you're not really confident in your argument. So those are two ways to sound confident on the page and off the page when presenting your argument. Go to the next slide.